Yeah. 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 So, I'm going to let you guys know right now, I am recording this podcast and I talk with them. For no reason other than in two hours, I have to go to my day job. I'm going to be late in a minute. I didn't, well, I ain't going to be late. I'm actually making sure. I'm making damn sure I'm not going to be late because I'm going to show up an hour early on site. But, so with that being said, welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast. How you doing? Um, generally speaking, every episode, I begin with saying some sentences that I feel like is like a good quote and I feel like something very important. And what I will say is this. If I could write a letter to the old, if you could write a letter to the old you, the you from four or five years ago when you just hadn't figured out how to do your hair right, when you had just were still wearing pigtails, when you still wore those ugly ass Nikes that your mom got from the Nike store from $89, even though she knows the best ones are at least $120, what would you say? What would you say to yourself? And the reason why I'm bringing that up because shout out to my homie Alex Galato. My homie Alex Galato, he did a song called Letters to the Old Me. And it's a really dope concept. Like in the song he was talking about, um, and the song basically he was talking about, he was basically was talking about, um, if you could write, if you could write a letter to the OG from four or five years ago, like from the OG, whether you were 16, you was 12 back then, what would you say? Like, what would you say to yourself in the song? What would you say to yourself in the song? And me personally, I thought, I thought about it. I, I thought about it in there. I thought it was a really, really good ass concept because I keep keep on headed with you. I have fucked up a lot. I have fucked up a lot in these past four or five years. And this and this weird because it'd be so many different things I could, I would tell myself back in the day if I could have started. But um, I invite you guys to do that now. Before I reported, before I even got on this microphone and started recording this podcast, I had put a Snapchat and an Instagram message out, letting all my followers know, hey, bro, you know, I'm finna talk about this. It's finna be on YouTube, be on my podcast. Send me a video, send me an audio of you saying what would be the letters of the OG because I want to hear what you guys got to say. I want to try to encourage interaction with the audience. But, but needless to say, needless to say, niggas was being a little bit, niggas was being a little bit shy. So I have to just, so I have to just use myself as entertainment. But for those of you guys who listen to me live, you guys can still message me or if you're on iTunes, give me reviews. I always tell you guys when I ask you guys questions, when I ask you guys questions on the podcast. Respond to the questions if you're listening to me through, through iTunes, through the podcast app on iTunes. Res- respond to me through the app on iTunes because then that makes me get more reviews. Because right now, all I have is one review, and it's this guy who said, Dope podcast, dope voice, keep it up, dude. And, <coughs> and because he used the word dope, some of them are going to assume that he was right. But they're like, I need more reviews than that. Bro. But um, it's lit, though. It's lit. It's lit, though. Um, if I could write a letter to the old me back in the day, back when my hair was blue and gray Boy, my hair has never been blue and gray but that actually would be a dope ass color that's one thing that the sucks about having dark skin it's like when you want to dye your hair you always get a worm to do their colors go correctly with your hair like i want or or if you're gonna get jumped in the hood from about it for being get, looking gay like i don't either, i don't know but um if i had to write a, if I had to write a letter to the old me and tell myself some advice from back in the day well but i would tell you if i had to write a letter to the old me and i'm gonna say the old me is probably maybe 10 years old in this scenario which I know is a pretty damn long time away, but I know for, if, I, if the old me was 10 years old in this situation, I would tell the old me, I don't know, I guess I would tell the old me, I don't know, I guess I would tell the old me to study broadcasting. I would tell the old me, and I don't think, when I, I, I think I would tell the old me to start my own podcast. I would tell the old me to try to get in contact with the internet, because at the time, when I was 10 years old, I was very poor, like very underprivileged. So at the time, I didn't even know really about like, Going on the internet and shit like that. Like I, we had obviously, I had Facebook and all that other stuff. But at the time, you know, at, at my crib itself, I didn't have the internet. You know, it was funny when I was talking to somebody about this. I just thought about this, and that was um, you know, for those of you guys who know about the urban culture, know about the streets and the herds and the ghettos where a lot of the young Negroes and other minorities come from in this country. You know, we have a thing called the housing projects in the hood. And I was telling this girl the other day, we were talking about what's the difference. I said because. I said, this it is also because I was still like it's a big difference between living in the hood and living in the projects. Said, the difference between living in the hood and the projects is when you live in the hood, I said when you live in the hood, generally speaking, it don't necessarily mean that you're poor. Like you could actually be you could you could actually probably be lower middle class, just happen to be living there. It don't necessarily mean that you're poor. But when you live where I lived at, you know, shout out to South Leo, thousand block, we in this bitch, thousand block. But when you live when I lived at, which was thousand blocks of projects in uh, South Leo, when you lived out there, Nigga, we all were poor. <laughs> we like, you all were poor. We all were poor. We all were upset every morning. All of us had to go to the goddamn welfare office, line up with our mom to go get to go get milk and government cheese and milk. So, 
when we go with someone, that's why that's why I always say when you go to school, when you go to when you go to like these little ghetto ass schools and see all these little kids fighting every day, my nigga, that's cause that's cause nigga, that's all niggas have to do. When you when you pour in the hood, nigga, that's all niggas have to do half the time is fight. That and that and try to that and try, and try that and try to become the next Kendrick Lamar, which either or, which either or is a, which either or, you know, is a good aspiration, you know. So, but um, I think the letter to the old, I think the letter to the old me would say, you know, hey, you know, hey, I think you're a talented guy. Don't let your bullies, don't let these bullies get the best of you. Don't let the negative thoughts get the best of you. Um, I know you and your mom and your step, your mom and your stepfather are at war with each other every single night. They throw plates at each other, throwing bowls at each other. Half the time, you don't even know if you're gonna sleep in the same bed that you slept in before. But just know, the times will not get better for about seven years or so. <laughs> so just ride it out. You know what's weird? What if the old, what if the future you had come back ten years in the past and told the old you indirectly things that he should do and things he should not do? So even though he couldn't tell you exactly what happened. <laughs> Happened. He told you things indirectly, and you just didn't know it. Like I always like, what if like, what if that happened? That actually would be a good ass thing. Like, what what if that happened? I think there was one book. My cousin, she's one of those people who's all theological and goes to Bible college, or goes to Bible college and Christian studies. And she read this one book she was telling me about where the people in the book basically was like, so the people in the book basically what they said was is like, when before you're born, you're a spirit in heaven, and you have a choice to choose between two lives. This other one and this other one, which is fucked up because what if you just was given a really bad draw? And like, what if you was given a really bad draw? Like, work at McDonald's for the rest of your life or clean toilets at, 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 at Snow Barker High School for all your life? You know, either it ain't like it ain't nigga, it, nigga, it's not like either or is a, is a good choice. But so in the story, to the story, you get to choose one or one life. And when you choose that life, you can't remember. And I kept thinking, like, yeah, let's like what I said. Like, what if you was really just given a bad draw? Like, don't. It, and that happens sometimes. Man, that happens some shit. That happens sometimes. That happens sometimes in life in general. Sometimes they get nigga. Sometimes you just get a really, really bad draw and get unlucky. You know, I have to deal with that a couple of times. You know, I think, I think, I think that, I think, I think when it comes to that, the letter to the old me, I think that's why I guess I think the guess that's why I would tell myself is too is like know how to stand. Sometimes you're gonna give him. Sometimes you're just gonna give him a bad draw, but. You're gonna give him a bad draw a lot of the times. I think that I think the challenge in life for you to be is not to accept those draws, or either fight those draw, either fight those draws, or do with the work with those draws the best you can. Let me tell you, sometimes you're not gonna have craft cheese. Sometimes you're gonna have to get the welfare cheese. And the welfare cheese tastes disgusting. It tastes like melted multi meal and oatmeal crust. But sometimes you sometimes you just gonna have to sometimes you just gonna have to take the old, you gonna take the L's with the new, take the L's. Now, granted, yeah. I, know, so I guess that would be the letter to the old me. But I'm fine all you guys to tell me what the letter to the old GB. Because everybody always says, you know, man, if I can go back to 21, 20, 19, 18, then what would I say? You know, I don't know. Mm. Nostalgia, you know, nostalgia has, nostalgia has a powerful effect on people. But anyway, anyway, yeah, I'm, re- anyway, yeah, I'm recording this. I'm recording this in a, um, I'm recording this in a, what is this called? I'm recording this in a Taco Bell. It's a really, really little, little spot to play this weird 2004 uh, goddamn rock pop music in the background. Cause that was the weirdest thing about always going. I remember when I went to college, I always met hella, I always met hella people from different countries, and like it was weird even from different countries listen to more American shit than I do. Cause like I like I listened to American shit. That's not what I'm saying, but like most of my stuff that I listened to at the time was like centered in you know nigga culture, like Future and Migos and um. YG, Ty Dolla Sign, Joe Moses, Wet. I remember when I first got to ASU, there was a song that came out by Joe Moses. It was called Wet. You pussy wet, huh? About that, huh? He got a, she ain't got no record, but she out the vet, huh? She had a Jets, huh? Her name Lex, huh? Then I, I want the neck, huh? Your pussy wet, huh? Yeah. That was a good ass. That was a good ass song. That actually was a, that was a actually, that actually was a really good song. Joe Moses is actually pretty dope. I don't know why niggas be sleeping on Joe Moses. He's a rapper from um, from South Angeles. He's like, there was like a period in between 2009 and 2010 where like a lot of niggas who just were bugs, bloods just popped off in LA. And that was the phase where you saw YG come out. And that's, and, and Joe Moses was one of them niggas. But uh, Joe Moses hasn't kind of spread outside of being known in California. But that nigga was dope. He had one song. He got one song that's so. The concept of the song is so entertaining to me. For those who are not interested in nigger culture and gangbang culture, I can kind of understand why you wouldn't listen to this song. Now, with that being said, the song is called The Big Homie. And for those who don't know about the hood, don't know what the hood is, but with the phrase Big Homie, we know it does not mean the big ass bag of sugar. What it means basically is saying is, 
the OGs, the older gangs, the original gangs, the niggas who like maybe 40, 50 years old, the niggas who got out of jail, who, who spent 16 or 17 years in jail raping niggas in San Quentin and got out and acting like nothing happened. And so those dudes were happening when you had those dudes, when you had those dudes, he had a video where he sounded like, I'm in the set with the big homies. Da, 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 da. And so like, in the song, and in the song, basically, he was talking, in the song, basically, he was saying, like, you know, I'm in the set with the big homies. In the video, he has all these OGs walking behind him, and man, let me tell you something. Did not these, these niggas, did not, did, 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 <laughs> these niggas look like, these niggas look, the, these niggas look just, you can tell every single one of these niggas had long sentences. I'm gonna tell you that right now. These niggas, it was, cause it was the funniest, sh- it was the, fu- it was the funniest, sh- it was the funniest, sh- it was the funniest shit, cause like, um, Cause my dad went to jail, and I already know. Like when niggas come from when when dudes come back from when dudes come back from doing a long time in jail, when dudes or as we say when we're embarrassed to talk about it in, in the family, when dudes come back from college, <laughs> getting that fourteen year, fifteen year to life, getting that fifteen year to life master's degree. When they come back from college, their skins are like blotchy and pale. It gets be hella buff. They got muscle in weird spaces. Like they have a belly, but they still have muscle under their chest. So like it sticks out. It's like they look like a letter B. Like it's the funniest shit in the world. But there was a real concept I like that. I'm in the set with the big homies. Yeah, but I see the big homies. Yeah. No, 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 podcasting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but it's a pot. Okay, yeah, 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 I noticed. <laughs> they, the, they, 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 they can hear, they can hear you now, they can hear you now at this point. They can hear you now at this point, so yeah. There's, there's about four or five women. Okay. It's not on the phone. It's like a it's a it's a podcast, but I'm recording it through the phone. Yeah, yeah. God bless technology. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, nigga. Okay, nigga. So anyway, so with that being said, so, so anyway, so with that being so with that being said, don't. So with that being. So with that being so with that being said, uh, yeah, there you had so you had I don't know you had you had some good rappers who came out in that phase like in 2009, 2010, 2011. Yeah, like the Y, yeah, the YGs, the Joe Moses, DJ Mustard, DJ Mustard, bro, like man, nigga, I remember, bro, you don't even know, bro, when I you don't even know when I got out of high school, bro, DJ Mustard was that nigga. You every song that you heard at like I think, y'all niggas y'all remember like between 11, 12, and 13, 14. Every song nigga, that you heard in the party and the kickback and the function that you heard, must it not be? Oh, matter of fact, that actually would be a good. Let me write that down. That's actually that actually be a um, that actually be that actually be that actually be a good way um of doing. It. Let's see, like that's actually that actually be a good way. Like if you're from California, shout out to those of you guys who are from Northern California, Southern California, Fresno, San Bernardino, um, Stockton, all areas. If you're from any of those areas, what do you think would a top? Let me say, what would be your top ten songs? That you listen to with a kickback of the front, where you about to throw that ass back on the nigga. Remember, you finna go dummy and ride him to the neck. I feel so. I feel so bad when I. Sp- I feel so bad when I speak like this because yesterday these two girls followed, subscribed to my podcast, and they're they're part of the Christian club. They listen. They listen to me now. They know who they. Y'all know who you are. And we'll let you know the language that I'm using right now. Ignore it. Ignore it. Is not the best language. But it is what it is. So that being said, write the name my top my top ten kickback songs that I like the most. YG Pop it. The YG Papa shit, I love that song. I love that song. I like Mexicans, Black Coast, White Coast, Puerto Ricans. If I had to choose my baby mama, she'd be a Puerto Rican. I like YG Pop it. Um, I think the songs I love are like Yike too. I guess it's like, or Yike or Grind too. It'd be like YG Pop it. Um, um, there's a song that's not really that widely known by her. Priceless, The Rock is called um, Yike Stan. Yike Stan. Um, I don't know, bro. So many different songs. Like, um, it depends what comes on the moment. The classic, the classic right now. I will tell you, even up until this point, seven years in the future, the classic, so the classic yikes song, the classic kickback song right now is is "Beat the Pussy Up" by I Am Stu. That shit to this day, that shit still slaps. Ah, beat the pussy up, 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 up. Every time that song, every time that song comes on, if you ain't, if you ain't dancing with a girl, even if you're ugly, nigga, you know that you have. To, even if you. 
even even if that song's on my even if you ugly nigga, you know for a fact, nigga, I have to, nigga, I, I have to move now. I have to start moving. I gotta hop on. I gotta hop on cheeks. I gotta hop on cheeks. Like it's the funniest. It's the funniest shit. That's what I do love about Cali culture. I guess I was um. Shout out to my homie Pedro Godoy. We was doing a podcast. We're not doing a podcast. He's a professor in Brazil. In Brazil, shout out to my people in Brazil. Seja muito bem-vindo a todos os gente que tá lá. And um, he had me record a video for him because he, he had me record a video for him because he was talking about um, he was doing this. He was doing this thing where um, he was doing this thing where like he was like a um, what was he trying to say? He's a, he's an English professor in this country, and he has a class. He has this project called Project Egan. What they trying to do is they trying to get more kids come from Brazil and apply for universities out here, like he did. That's how we met. And so he wanted me to do a video for him, saying like, you know, why this would be the greatest country to come to in the world, and it must be the dream. Why you should come? Da, 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 da. And so I recorded the video for him, and I, you know, I told him to. I was like, you know, you feel me? If you come here, first thing's gonna happen is you are gonna get robbed. You get shot. You have to join the gang. And I'm joking. Obviously, I didn't. Obviously, I didn't tell him that. But I now record the video, just tell him, you know, when you come to the United States of America, you know, you come here. The best part about coming here is all the experience that you have. The experiences go to different concerts, the go to different parties, go into an Ed Sheeran concert, ride in five deep to the Lake Havasu. Like there's so many diff- different and dope ass experiences that you have coming here. So I said, like you know, hey, you have the opportunity, a lifetime chance to come here. And one thing about coming to an American university, and this is something that I think like Brazil doesn't have, is. You have a chance. You have a chance more to kind of discover who you are. Like I think when you go to, I think like generally, I think like generally speaking, when you go to, I think like generally speaking, when you go to like universities, like say for example in Brazil or Colombia and Chile, when you only have one choice, if you do not get that choice, you might be murdered tomorrow. That's it's a high experience. That's that's a high exaggeration. Niggas are not savages and barbarians, but when you go to countries like that, where you kind of have not the option to switch major every four or five weeks, or even go to different clubs like the. The book club, the greeting club, or go to the fraternities, the sororities, etc., etc. I think you have a harder time, not a harder time, but you don't have the opportunity to discover who you are, learn who you are. Like, that's how I learned more about myself. Like, like I remember when I first got to ASU, it blew my mind. Like, when I first saw the kick with the Brazilians, and I knew it really kind of blew my mind, like, how much I really started, like, gravitating towards the culture and wanted to learn the languages that they wanted to learn the languages that they speak, wanted to learn how they talk, they walk, listen to Pagoji music. Like, Pagoji is like my favorite music. I listen to Pagoji every single last night. I would listen to a song. They got a song for those of you guys who speak Spanish. If you do speak Spanish, you probably still won't understand this shit, but you kind of get the gist of it. It's called Dufundo de Noso Quitao. It's a really, 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 really beautiful song. And I think it's so fucking, it's so fucking lit, but I'm, it's a hella lit ass song, but I didn't, it's a lit song from a music genre that I wasn't even aware existed five years ago, but now, you know. I'm listening, but now I'm rocking to it and I'm listening to it every single day. So that's what I always tell niggas, bro. Like you can't just live your whole life like just like you can't just live your whole life just not like expanding your borders and trying to learn and experience the world and learn the different things. Like sometimes, like you know, that's why I be telling everybody, bro. Sometimes you got to put down the 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 school the NBA school boys and the Kodak Kodak Blacks and the goddamn um and the goddamn Migos. Like you got to listen to different stuff, expand your mind, like because the world's so short. The world's too short. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can. I can. I can. I don't know. I can. I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you. I don't know, I can't tell you. But I'll, more, more of the story. I guess what I can say. I guess what I can say is, is this is a, this is dope. This is a dope country to be in. This is a dope state. The reason why I kind of wanted to talk about that story is because I, when I, as I was explaining the story, as I was explaining to the, the students in the video, you know why you guys should be excited to come to this country. I was thinking, like, man, this is a really dope state in the country because most, I, I always think, like, most of the more desirable qualities that the Air America represents the unity, the funness, being able to fuck women from different races, a lot of that can be found. A lot of that can be found in California. Like, when you come here, just because it's more welcoming, it's more, oh, we got more beaches and shit. Because, nigga, they don't have that shit everywhere else. I, went, I remember when I moved to Alabama, that shit was dry. Like, you went out there. The parties were terrible. They did have parties. They did have parties. They were really slow. They did have parties that were really slow. You went out there. That was the first I was telling somebody. I was telling them the other day. That was the only place I'd ever went to. That was the first place I ever went to in my whole life where everybody in the state was either black or everybody in the city was either black or white. It was like no in between. If you couldn't find a taqueria, you couldn't find a Chinese food spot. No. Now, did you have a Chinese food out there? I think you had like one Chinese food spot out there. But it was bad. So, that being said. I guess we can talk about Black Panther. Um, I did a video on YouTube actually reviewing it and talking about what I thought about the film. 
And you know It didn't get that many views So I guess I have to Let you niggas know What I feel about it again And I'm pretty sure Every single podcast That exists on this earth Is gonna do a music movie review About it So I'm gonna do mine about it We're gonna talk about it And we're gonna see What we got to say Now That being said Did I like the movie I loved it That it was a dope ass movie Let the cinematography In the film I love seeing the, It was It was weird how like Um Okay, so it was weird, like how um, it was weird how black the film was. I was just so funny to me, like the first scene in the film. The first scene in the film is set in Oakland. Like <laughs> it's so fucking up. Like I forget, like bro, you be forgetting, bro. Like because I, cause I used to go to Oakland all the time when I was a kid because I lived in Vallejo. Vallejo's a small city, maybe like twenty miles outside of Oakland. You be forgetting that Oakland in America is like the black mecca. It's like a Philadelphia on the West Coast. So, like, we it, the first film is the first epic. The first scene of the film is set in Oakland, and the cinematography in the film is beautiful. I love how the world. I love how the. I love how the world. I love how I love how when you watch. I love how when you watch the film it introduces you to like a new world, and it's called it's like this new world that's fascinating. And these elephants, these niggas is wearing these dope ass colors and cloaks and stuff. Like, it's hella. It's heck of. It's heck of lit. I also like. I also like how. I don't know. It's, it's just a really, really dope. It's a really, really dope. It's just a really, really dope film. Like the cinematography in the film was great. I love the different colors. I love because one thing about me when it comes to films, I like when you take me to a film and you introduce me to a totally different world. Like when I watch a film, I'm like nigga, do I live here? That's how I like. That's how I feel like for five for for movie was two hours long for an hour and forty five minutes. Nigga, I felt like I was Wakanda. That's the first part about it. Second part about a film, I can guess you could say the acting. The acting was hell of it. Chadwick Boseman was great. Lupita Nyong'o, bro, 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 bro. I gotta hold. I gotta give me do round of applause for it. Shout out to Lupita Nyong'o, bro. I'm gonna tell you right now. Let me say this: she could get the dick, nigga. She could get the, she. So she could get the dick. I'm telling you that right now. Lupita Nyong'o in that film, she is so. She's just so fucking bad. She's like a fucking like a chocolate racehorse, nigga. Like she's just, she's just hella bad. But she did hella. She did. She did. She did a good acting job in the film. Now, there are a few aspects about the film that I didn't like and I thought were pretty shitty. Nothing I should touch on. The main thing about the film, I, the main, mm, mm, mm. the main thing about the film I didn't like, which I thought was, the main thing I didn't like about the film, which I didn't like and I thought was was annoying, was um, I didn't like the fighting, and. Not the fighting from everybody, because Lupita Nyong'o's fighting was kind of sluggish. Lupita's fighting and Chadwick Boseman's fighting was terrible. Their fighting was terrible, and that might be because them niggas haven't haven't been worked out. Like them niggas ain't been working out, and they ain't been working out and doing Kaibo and Taiwondo, or whatever the hell the uh, the other ball that the girl was doing. The other ball hit a girl, the general. I forgot her name. She was with. She was with the. She was with the shit. She was out there. She had the spear. Nigga, she had to knock niggas out the spear. She could fly. Like nigga, she couldn't really fly, but she could almost fly. Like nigga, she was with the she was with the shit. She was dope. The issue that I had was that the main nigga, the main nigga that was doing this, the main nigga who's actually we all should be liking and, and loving, niggas, uh, Black Panther. This nigga was like with the terrible, most terrible hand to hand combat. And every single fight this nigga had in the film, he almost got his ass kicked. Like literally, like literally every single film, he literally almost got his ass kicked. Literally every single. Fi- Every single, every <laughs> every single, every single, like literally in every single scene in the film, he almost got the shit beat. He almost got the shit beat out of him. I, I, I don't like that. Like, I don't like, I don't like when you try to make, don't, let me tell you something. If you're going to make a black superhero, and you're going to try to make him relatable to my people, if you're going to try to make him relatable and somebody that everybody can understand and all niggas fuck with and all black kids go to school and they want to be, you gotta make him a nigga who know. How, you gotta make him a nigga who know how to throw hands. Like he gotta know how to throw hands. Like you can't just make him. You can't. You can't just make him like some. You can't just make him like some regular baseball nigga who don't know how to. Who don't know how to get down, bro. Like no. But that being. But with that being said. But with that being said. But with that being said, he was. He was. He was. He was dope. He was. He was. It was. It was a dope film. That issue with his fighting ability, with his fighting choreography, that was a big issue to me because, like I said. The world is dope. The world is dope. The illustration of the actual world in itself is fascinating and magnificent. However, you can't have a great movie but have a such shitty ass superhero. That was my thing. It was a great movie with a shitty superhero. That was my thing. Now.